The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Kwajabiamila, has said the federal government must take all necessary actions to tackle the security challenges facing Nigeria. The Speaker decried how the spate of insecurity has disrupted the life of the people as a nation, as well as threatening the continued existence of the country. He said national security is generally understood to be the preserve of the executive arm of government. He said as a result, the general public and the political class often do not know what the legislative role in national security is or ought to be. Joining us via Zoom is Onai Komo, Chairman, Association of Industrial Security and Safety Operators in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Komo. So, diving straight into this issue where the speaker, Femi Bajabili Mila, was talking about the state of insecurity in the country, he advised the federal government to take all necessary action. So, what actions must the government take which is different from what is currently being done? Um, thank you very much for having me, Ms. Anit. Uh, I think um, the speaker's um, alarm is uh, quite timely because uh, we have a situation where we are uh, slowly being overwhelmed by um, a myriad of um, security threats um, from the Northeast, from the Northwest, um, even from the Niger Delta. I mean, that is a little tame now, but um, uh, from uh, the Middle Belt, uh, you have a situation where all zones of the country um, you know, all zones are in crisis at the same time. And that is really unfortunate because the way um, public safety works is concentration of resources. When there's a, a conflict, let's say in the Northeast, the Boko Haram conflict, government concentrates uh, uh, all resources uh, to fight that conflict and put it down. And then when there's a conflict somewhere else, there's another concentration of resources to put that conflict down. But the situation where you have conflicts all over, it uh, tends to uh, become uh, overwhelming, raising that alert that um, we, have, we are coming close to a situation where you have, uh, perhaps let's put it this way, I, I hate to use the word, but you are coming to the situation of a failed state or perhaps even an anarchy. And so we don't, we don't want that. We want um, it to be fixed. So now the question you ask is, what should the government do? Well, first of all, the government needs to realize that there's a security problem. There's a dire security problem on hand. And I'm happy that somebody from the legislature is raising this uh, alarm at this time because we have been raising it from the industry. And we'll be saying that, look, there's a problem. Let it be fixed. And so just realizing that and stop being in denial is very useful. And then, uh, you know, you need to now table a large um, I have said in the past that relying on them um, uh, you know the intuitive method of problem solving what worked yesterday will not work I'm surprised to hear um, very top government officials saying that oh uh, Nigeria is used to conventional warfare excuse me um, Boko Haram has been killing people for 11 years we should know now that that's an asymmetrical uh, warfare, and we should adapt. So what I'm saying is we have to come up with uh, structured problem-solving capabilities. We have to uh, come up with uh, me mental constructs, powerful mental constructs that can solve complex problems. You cannot bring a knife to a gunfight, and that's what we are doing. We are carrying a knife, we are going to a gunfight, and we are wondering why you know, things are getting worse. So that's really what I think uh, needs to happen now. We must have a change in strategy, a change in thinking, and a change in the way we approach this problem so that it doesn't overwhelm us. Hmm. And insurgency is not uh, just the only source of uh, security concern for now, but there's also communal clashes, banditry, uh, and ki kidnapping, which has escalated. So what do you think is responsible for this? Thank you very much. I think, um, well, <clears throat> you, you have you said three things, so we we'll have to look at those three uh, because they are all different problems and they have different, they present with different uh, causes and uh, different manifestations. And of course, the solutions will be different. There's no one uh, cure fits all. There's no bubu niche here uh, to use the Nigerian balance. So um, what it is is that um, 
take insurgency, uh, you said it's not the only problem, but you said we have banditry. Banditry and insurgency, they are first cousins. They are the same. Uh, in fact, there is a theory that it is uh, the banditry you are saying is a metastasis of the insurgency from the Northeast. That means is the insurgency in the North, is the Boko Haram problem that is spreading far afield because it's not been resolved. You know, so, uh, it's, it's, so that's, it's, it's going out of uh, the genies peeping out of the bottle, as it were, and it is going afield. We have evidence that that is happening. And of course, many uh, key public figures have spoken about this, not just researchers and scholars like myself, but many other persons have spoken about this. Now, you talked about um, uh, communal clashes. Well, that's a different thing. If, if communities clashes, brother and brother clashing, we have a famous communal clashes in uh, Cross River State, uh, clashes almost everywhere in the country. Uh, uh, the, the most famous communal clash in, uh, past history could be the uh, uh, Omuleri and Aguleri clash many years ago. But however, this is brother against brother. These are usually products of boundary disputes or farmland disputes. These are things well within the purview of state government and boundary commissions to resolve and perhaps preach peace. I think one thing that's become very evident or very obvious here in Nigeria is that the violence quotient is very high. And there's always a quick resort to violence. We always quick to take gun and kill a lot of frustration and maybe quite a bit of mental sickness in this country, which is not being detected uh, because we don't have the medical infrastructure to deal with that. Or in fact, we don't, we don't, we're, not even, uh, we, we're not even sickness in this country. But having said that, the other one you said was uh, the, I think the farmer assessment clashes, where that one is occurring mostly in the middle belt. And that is a tough competition for are, um, you know, land, uh, uh, pure competition for arable land uh, and uh, uh, the helders, the pastoralists, they want uh, pasture and uh, while uh, the farmers want to grow crops and things like that. My position has always been you cannot arrogate or you cannot appropriate uh, someone else's um, property and for yourself and uh, say you are trying to solve your own problem. If you need arable land, then go buy arable land or make some arrangement for that arable land. But you cannot go and seize the arable land belonging to uh, uh, um, this illegal, that is violence. So that is really the problem here, man. So, and there's been predictions in the past about Nigeria <laughs> splitting up. Uh, do you think these security challenges we're currently facing might just move the country to the brink of that collapse? Um, yes, if, if we don't, uh, if you have a, a, a cancer, let's say, and you don't treat it, it will kill the organism. That is, that is just a simple analogy. Um, we Again, that's what, what I said in my opening comment. I said that we have too many crises occurring in all parts of the country, and all of them are threatening the population in very severe ways. Now, it, it behooves the government to understand, rather than just spend, send the spin masters out uh, to go and say, oh, talk down everything, oh, there's no problem, oh, everything is okay. I mean, imagine what just happened in those states. We had to send 30,000 policemen, 10% of the entire Nigeria police force, to go and uh, govern an uh, election. I mean, that's crazy. It's not done anywhere in the world. Um, in other parts of the world, people go to vote and there's no police. It's only election canvassing personnel that's there. But here in Nigeria, it's a different thing. Uh, you send 30,000 policemen just for one state election. Meanwhile, we don't have adequate policing around the country. And that is the problem. Because of this um, you know, uh, very unwise use of uh, security and law enforcement resources, we end up with this kind of um, outcome that we have. So if this outcome persists, it's going to end up, uh, I mean, look at what is happening. Uh, the, there's a lot of demand and a lot of research to community policing, to regional policing, and so on and so forth. So this is how it starts. You know, people start asking to take care of themselves because they feel that whoever had the constitutional duty to do so 
uh, isn't able to do so. And that's really very unfortunate. So I think uh, it behooves the federal government to understand that, um, uh, like the Constitution really charged it to do, the security and welfare of the citizens is its responsibility. And if you do just that, take care of the security and welfare of the citizens. And uh, everyone's looking to the federal government for security, but what would you advise state governments to begin to do? Thank you very much. Well, I, I think the, uh, it's, uh, they say when the fish starts getting rotten, it gets rotten from the head. Uh, the states, they are sub-national uh, entities. Uh, yes, we have local governments too. They are even sub-sub-national entities. So uh, yes, I, I, states have a role to play, very prominent role. But uh, the federal government is the is the head. I'm sorry to say, as it were, I, with all due respect to uh, students of uh, uh, federalism. So, but having said that, uh, besides Nigerian federalism, the, the way it's being canvassed is uh, is wrong-headed. Uh, we need uh, cooperative federalism in this country. So all these people who didn't read anything about political science and Banding words that they don't know the meaning about. I mean, I, I, I feel sorry for them, but ignorance is blissful. But however, uh, what it is is that uh, the states do have a role to play, a very prominent role to play, uh, but it starts from the top. It starts from the federal government because the federal government has more resources. The federal government controls the army, controls the police agencies. Now, what the states do, they provide a support. Let me give you an example. And uh, there's this... Uh, Colonel, very heroic Colonel, who was killed uh, recently in the Boko Haram ambush in Damboa. And what did the state governor there do? He gave um, uh, some cash to the uh, family of the deceased and also gave a, a house because he said he learned that the guy didn't uh, build a personal house. So what, that is a very powerful symbol of, um, you know, uh, of caring uh, a powerful symbol of recognition of the supreme sacrifice that that senior officer paid. You know, now, uh, I'm not saying that the state's role is limited only to giving out a handouts when something like this happens. Of course, the states are doing things. For example, the Southwest Security Network, uh, Abotekun, is part of the uh, contribution of the states. In the north, you have Hizba all over. I think I read something yesterday that uh, a governor's uh, uh, aide son was arrested by his bar for some offense, and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to say is that the states are playing, look, this is a big country. 200 million people is not a joke. So the states are playing their role, but the, the, the real problem now, the one that uh, uh, you are interviewing me about, Mr. Bajabi Amila's uh, comments, is something that uh, is even beyond the power of the states to execute. So yes, yeah, certainly the states have role, but it needs to be defined, it needs to be uh, put in a context, and even the local governments also. We should not have a situation where local governments have been so emasculated, it's like they don't exist anymore. And I think part of the problem most of the time is because the state governments, uh, uh, they, they seize the resources that are for the state at the local government. And then also, the biggest problem in Nigeria, lack of accountability. Nobody's being held accountable All right, for sir. what is not being done right. Thank you, Mr. Ekomu, for your thoughts on the breakfast. I appreciate you, miss. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.